Today, we are going to go back to what we started talking about on Thursday. Okay, so we're on simple subjects and simple predicates. So if you will look at your yellow note card, review a little bit of what we talked about on Thursday, because it's been a while ago. <clears throat> So, on Thursday, I had you write down some information at the bottom of your yellow note card, some definitions. So, we wrote down a main clause is interchangeable with what other word? Independent. Independent clause. And those are clauses that can stand on their own as a sentence. Then, the opposite, subordinate or dependent is a clause that cannot, cannot see it on its own because it has a subordinator. And so we needed to know what a subordinator was. Any subordinating conjunction, relative, or demonstrative pronoun that creates a subordinate clause. May I see that piece of paper, please? Yeah, you can copy that. Okay. So now I would like you to get your pink note card out, which you don't have anything written on, right? Nope. Correct? Yeah. Nothing? Correct. Okay. There's some lines. Yeah, I wrote them. <clears throat> okay. You're going to title this card Rules for Sentences. Now, some of these are going to be things that you already know, but maybe have never, like, considered. And some of it might be new information. Okay? So, the first thing is, the subject of a sentence always, and remember, in the English language, nothing is always, but... The subject of a sentence always precedes the predicate. <clears throat> but it's English, so... There's always an exception to every rule in the English language. So the subject always comes first. Except... If the question is a set a, if the sentence is a question, then the verb comes first. Sometimes. sometimes. Well, I will never give you a tested question that is a sentence because they're too hard to figure out. Like if the sentence says, um, Will Jenny win the lottery? <laughs> Who is the subject of that sentence? Jenny. Jenny. So you need to turn the sentence into a statement. Jenny will, will win the lottery. lottery. And then it puts it in the right order. But in a question, oftentimes the, the verb is split around the subject. And they're harder to locate. So <coughs> we will... Did you do a lot of this in college? Uh, no, not really. Self-taught? Um, I just like it. Yeah. I wish that I would have been taught it in a better way in high school. Hopefully this is a better way. <clears throat> okay, number two. The subject, nor the predicate... is found within a prepositional phrase. So the subject nor the predicate of a sentence is found within a prepositional phrase. That's why we started with prepositions. 
In sentences, we need to eliminate the prepositional phrases because that is always extra added additional right. information. I had a question. It says the subject nor predicate is found in that, so that means it's not in there? Correct. Okay. Subject nor predicate is found within a prepositional phrase. So not. They cannot be located within a prepositional phrase. Okay? Number three. When a comma is near the beginning of a sentence, look closely. That's a bracket, okay? It should have been bigger. I always hated that about math. The brackets always look ugly. <coughs> Hello? Um, for what? Okay, hold on one second. Okay, so now open up your textbooks to page 497. So we are going to use these note cards in conjunction with one another. as quick reminders. So when I say, look at your pink note cards, you will all have the exact same information right on it. Okay, I was just talking about um, this with the juniors, I said to them, if anybody's interested in getting a present for Mrs. Underwood, I just saw this book at Target yesterday called P is for pterodactyl. <laughs> and it's a book about all the anomalies of spelling in the English language. <clears throat> so it says A is for aisle. Like a shop, like when you push your car down an aisle. Because it starts with A, but it's just not an I. I don't know. I only look through like A, B, and C. And I don't ask what the other letters were because I don't remember. Um, but I tell kids this every year. There's a reason why you have to take English for 13 years in a row. Because there are so many rules, and none of the rules have absolutes. It's not like math, where two is always greater than one, and one plus one always equal two. In English, there are no absolute rules, and the language is constantly changing. So you have to... Keep going back to it over and over and over and over. So, since you were a young student, I would say second grade, could have been earlier, <clears throat> teachers have used the word subjects and predicates to talk about sentences, right? It should now be new information. But as you get older, the sentences still have subjects and predicates, it's just they also have a lot more words. So what, some of the first books you read have sentences of five to seven words. Okay, Kellen is reading these books. One of his favorites is the Biscuit series. Biscuit chases the ball. Biscuit catches the ball. The ball rolls away. I've read all of these. Biscuit is sad. Woof, woof. Every page says woof, woof, or woof, okay? The little puppy named Biscuit, the little like, one, yellow lab. Biscuit, biscuit, biscuit. 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 And so, as you get older, you could still write a book about Biscuit chasing the ball, but your sentences are going to be much longer than five words. They're going to say, Biscuit chases a ball around the tree the park, around the tree and back. <laughs> and he never catches it. So you're going to make your sentences more complicated. That's what we're going to talk about this week. So, I need you now to get your... Orange. Um, orange. 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 Purple. 
Orange. Get how? Let's do orange on the back orange. though. Orange. On the back. So the one with no lines. The side with yeah. no lines. <clears throat> it's gonna be short. That's a good deal. Directions. Okay. Directions for sentence analysis. The first one is cross out prepositional phrases. Number two, locate verbs. Number three, connect subjects. That's a T, sorry. Two verbs. Okay, we're going to add more steps to that, but for today, that's all we need. <clears throat> okay, from now on, on your worksheets, I expect you to follow those three directions. So, let's look at exercise one on page 497. <coughs> oh my gosh. American teenagers spent about $88 billion in 1993. Step number one says, cross out the prepositional phrases. So, what words in that sentence should be crossed out? In 1993 and about okay, that leaves us with only American teenagers spent. So, what's the subject of that sentence? Uh, teenagers. teenagers, and what did they do? Spent. spent. Number two, the amount increased to approximately 99 billion in 1994. Two. Prepositions. To approximately 99 billion in 1984, the amount increased. Amount. So, what's the verb? Increased. And what increased? The amount. amount. Number three, the cause for the increase was partially an increase in the number of teenagers in the United States. Prepositions? For the increase in the number of teenagers in the United States. So, we're left with? The cause was partly an increase. What is the verb? Was. was. What was? Cause. cause. See how sometimes a prepositional phrase separates a subject and verb? <clears throat> how many of you would have picked increase if we didn't cross that out? A lot of you. Number four, money came from parents, jobs, allowances, and gifts. Prepositions? All the way to the end. So, Money. verb. Yeah. What came? Money. Many teens hold jobs after school, on weekends, and during school vacations. After school, on weekends. After All the rest. The so, what's the verb? Hold. Who holds? Teens. There you go. <gasps> okay. This is simple subjects and predicates. So, all you're going to mark on this worksheet is the single subject and the single predicate. <coughs> In addition, you're going, which, Kerrigan, you'll have to do this because I didn't tell you that. In addition, I want you to cross out, like draw a line over the prepositional phrases. Does somebody, anybody else already have this worksheet that I, I do? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> 13. Okay, let's look at the first three. I didn't give you one? I'll go back to copy. I have a backup. Again? He's prepared, Kyle. It's Miss Underwood. Okay. The first thing is, I apologize, but I need you to change the directions to draw one line under the simple subject and circle each simple predicate. So this should be circled. <clears throat> and then actually above that, you can write cross out 
prepositions. <clears throat> so let's do number one. Bells were ringing in joyous celebration of the king's coronation. What should we cross out in this sentence? In joyous, in joyous celebration, celebration of the, of the king's, king's coronation. coronation. And so what will we, what's the verb? We're ringing. What we're ringing? Bells. There you go. Number two. According to poet John Keats, whales are sea-shouldering mammals. What's the preposition? Or, or, or I think according to is a compound preposition. According to poet. Verb. Are. 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 What are? Whales. <clears throat> Number three. Flowers were growing in every nook and cranny of the tiny backyard. Prepositions. In every nook and cranny. Of the so what's the verb? And we're growing. We're growing. What we're growing? Flowers. Makes sense? Okay, I'll give you two minutes. <coughs> 